I'm Big T, I'm from Barulula, and this song is called Grateful. Feel free to clap along, and yeah, hope you enjoy. From the start to the finish, my friend. From the beginning to the end, rapping from the heart is no easy task. Do what you gotta do, and it'll last. Keep moving forward, never looking back into the past. Cause it will just be a distraction, attacking your mental action. If you find some help for yourself, then you'll feel the satisfaction. Coming back in, then you'll make things happen. Now I got everybody head bobbing along to my song. This is young man from BLA, aka Boralula. I got something to say. Everything is going good, gotta find a way to. Thank God, so I pray for the food on my plate every night and day And for the warm bed and the roof that's over my head I said what I said, yes I have dreams, I'm not ashamed Don't change us with the same brush, we are not the ones to blame We are here to make a change, that's happening around us Cause the bad vibe is surrounding us, trying to brainwash all of us Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end I remember I was hungry cause my family was always struggling and budging for money Always broke, always used to hope my family would stop Wasting money on humble substances like alcohol and smoke show My mom would always tell me not to do that, to do this as a kid Now look on me now, standing in front of the crowd saying the words out loud Then my family must be really proud of what a man I've become Especially dad and mom That they had a son that grew up not a screw up That had fun even though we didn't have none Sometimes to be a hassle But kids gotta be careful Most of the nights I played wasn't that full But I was always grateful to get food To stop the rumbling and I stop make at least it was something so better than nothing To stop your fussing Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Showing love to my supporters and fans Because I know how it feels to be ignored and embarrassed After all, sharing is caring From the darkness I'm emerging Searching for the long and broken, healing the ones that be hurting, trying to seek attention, trying to seek affection, that's your only intentions, it's the only interaction with the world that we living in, some say that rapping comes naturally, while I just rap casually, they don't know I'm struggling, but I'ma keep hustling, as long as I'm grinding, my heart gon' keep shining, cry later, don't forget to keep laughing, so I can keep this comforting songs coming, you know Big T, keep it PG, ain't no need for cussing, I will never Stop loving Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end Grateful for my family Grateful for my friends Grateful for my family Grateful for my friends Grateful for my family Grateful for my friends Grateful for the love And I will hold it to the end Thank you Good afternoon everyone and welcome to this beautiful Friday, our very final day of the week. Congratulations on making it to the end. I know it's been a long week, lots of maths and lots of new learning, um, which has been very exciting. Again, my name is Mr. Liko. And my name is Mr. Max. And let's have a look at what we're learning today. So on your first slide, uh, you can see we are learning two. Count in twos to help us with our two times tables. A really, really simple way of starting to um, get confident in our times tables. We'll also learn more about repeated subtraction and word problems. So we've looked at lots at uh, repeated addition. Now we're going to see if we can count backwards 
using our word problems that we see on our slides. And then we've got a special guest at the end of this uh, lesson where we will uh, have our special guest complete the final row of our speed addition challenge, which you should all be up to in your workbooks. Okay, so let's uh, come here to the uh, student work desk over here and let's focus on uh, the two tasks that we introduced yesterday. So. Mr. Max has gone ahead and completed our two uh, worksheets from yesterday. And if you've completed those, this is what it should look like. So we focused on those Lego blocks and we managed to count the bumps on each of those Lego blocks. So let's have a look at one of Mr. Max's um, answers on that sheet. So for example, let's have a look at number nine. Okay. So we see how many uh, Lego blocks do we see there, Mr. Max? Well, count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six Lego blocks. Awesome. And how many bumps on each block? Two. One, two. Cool. So as you can see there, in re using repeated addition, you have two plus two and, and so forth. And in times tables, that looks like six times two, giving you the answer of 12. Okay. So hopefully uh, you're able to find that worksheet uh, you know, quite fun and quite straightforward uh, to work on. And our other worksheet from yesterday um, was counting up in ones, twos, fives, and tens. Now we focused on the 50s yesterday, and we've done the first line of 65, uh, just underneath that. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at uh, the answers that we've got there. So in the second row, we have 67, 69, 71, 73, 75, and 77. What's the number pattern that we can see there, Mr. Max? Well, it's going up by two. Each number is two more than the number before. Nice, awesome. And the row underneath that, you have 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95. Now a bit more of a different number pattern there. Can you explain uh, what's happening there, Mr. Max? Well, here the numbers are actually going up by five each time. So the number, um, the next number is always five more than the one before it. Cool, and how can we use our number chart to help us mm. with that? So, for example, if we, if we start at 65, then we count five. One, two, three, four, five. That's 70. Count nice. five more. One, two, three, four, five, 75. And it goes onwards. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. So underneath that, uh, your task was to write the missing numbers on the steps. We have the first three kind of steps uh, going up, um, which is really, really um, fun to do, especially with your number chart. But the last one is a little bit more tricky. Can you explain why that last mm. one there, starting at 88, but finishes with 68? Well, if the ladder starts, if the staircase starts at 88 and ends at 68, what that means is that we're actually going down in numbers. We might be going up in steps, but the numbers themselves are going down. And, and each number goes down by two. So we start at 88 and then we go to 86. Then we go down another two, down to 84 onwards, all the way down to 68. Nice. And using your number chart again, mm -hmm. how can that help us? Well, starting at 88, count two down. One, two, 86. Then count two down, one, two, 84. Count nice. two down, one, two, 82, and onwards. Perfect. Well done. So uh, a great way to help you with your counting both forwards and backwards, um, which will lead us onto our new tasks today. Um, which is the two times tables. So if you turn the, uh, the pages in your workbooks, you will see the next worksheets, which look something like this, the two times table. So on the left-hand side of Mr. Max, you will see uh, one of the easy ways for us to practice our counting is to write over the numbers and say them out loud. So let's do that first one together. So counting in twos, you'll uh, cross out the number two as you say it. Mm. So two, four, Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty. Perfect. Well done. So you'll do the same again in their next question. Then it gets a little bit more tricky where we get to fill in the missing numbers. So using the same strategy, uh, you'll do that. So let's have a look at say number three. All right. So count again, filling in the spaces. Write over the numbers and say them out aloud. So let's have Mr. Max demonstrate for us. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, 
26, 28, 30. Awesome. Okay, so again, you can go on and complete the rest of that worksheet uh, by yourselves. And also on the, the following page after that, you'll see the two times tables where you get to fill in the missing spaces. Um, and we'll focus on that in the next lesson. But you can also use the number chart to help you with your two times tables, counting forwards. And if there is a question, um, as such, you'll count backwards as well using the same strategies. Okay, so let's have a look at our next slide. And again, just to remind you, we have three ways that we've focused on in Year 7 and 8 Maths so far. So we have the column way, and today we're going to do a lot of focus on repeated subtraction, um, also merging that together with the number line, and how that looks like when we're counting backwards. So let's have a look at our first word problem. So, Got one. Cool. All right, mm -hmm. All right, so word problem number one, and I've used a few of our teachers right here at Yarara College, um, to show you some of these word problems. So, Miss Flo had 16 chocolate bars. She ate two chocolate bars each day for one week. Mm -hmm. How many chocolate bars does Miss Flo have left at the end of the week? So, let me read that again. Miss Flo had 16 chocolate bars. She ate two chocolate bars each day for one week. How many chocolate bars does Miss Flo have left at the end of the week? Mm -hmm. So, we know that there's seven days in a week. And we're going to use our number line here on the whiteboard to show you how to do repeated subtraction while counting backwards. So, let's have a look. So, starting, say, on Monday, which is day one, yep. uh, Miss Flo had 16 bars. Yep. That's where we begin. She then ate two on Monday, so we go down by two minus two. Nice. On Tuesday, down by two, 12 left. On Wednesday, down by two, 10 left. On Thursday, down by two, eight left. On Friday, down by two, six left. On Saturday, down by two, four left. And finally, on Sunday, two more chocolate bars and there's only two left. Awesome, okay. So in total, if we really do the counting, if we add those two together, how many chocolate bars did Miss Flo eat in that one week? Well, we've got, um, she ate two chocolate bars and seven times she ate them, so she must have eaten 14 chocolate bars. Cool. And we can do that using some multiplication. Yep. So we've got seven days, seven groups of two chocolate cool. bars equals 14. Nice. Okay. So we have 16 minus 14 giving you the answer of two using repeated subtraction and minusing or taking away the same number. Okay. Let's have a look at another problem or another example. And using the number line again, we're going to show you how to do repeated subtraction. So, Mr. Kieran, as you all know, Mr. Kieran, he loves his fishing. He went fishing with his six friends. He caught 18 barramundi, one of my favorite um, mm. species of fish, and he gave two barramundi to each of his friends. How many fish does Mr. Kieran have left over? So, Mr. Kieran went fishing with his six friends. He caught 18 barramundi. A really, really uh, big day for Mr. Mm. Kieran. And he gave two barramundi to each of his friends. How many fish does Mr. Kieran have left over? So let's see if we can work that out, Mr. Max. Okay. Well, um, Mr. Kieran started with 18 fish. And each time he gives away two. And he does that six times because two mm. fish go to six friends each. Yep. Nice. So down by two, two fish he's given away. Down by two again to the second friend two fish given away. Then he gives two to the third friend. Then he gives two to the fourth friend. Then he gives two to the fifth friend. And finally, he gives two to the sixth friend, leaving him with six barramundi for himself. Nice, right. very generous of uh, Mr. Kieran to give away mm. that many barramundi. So again, we have 18 minus two, four, six, 18, 12. So we have 18, Minus 12, using repeated subtraction, and also our number line, leaving him with the answer of six fish left. Mm. Okay? So hopefully that's a good example. Now, let's have a look at column subtraction. A, a little bit of a different way to uh, minus or take away subtraction, and let's have a look at the problem um, so far. So, Mr. Tom made 24 guitars with the senior fellas, and we know that that's one of our electives here at Yarara. He took 14 guitars to use for their very first show. How many guitars did Mr. Tom leave behind? So let me read that again. 
Mr. Tom made 24 guitars, so he made 24 with the senior fellas. He took 14 away to use for their first show. So I'll put 14 there. How many guitars did Mr. Tom leave behind at school? So using the column way or the column subtraction, let's figure out how many guitars Mr. Tom left behind. So starting on the ones column, we always start on the right side. The ones column, we have four minus four, which is zero, we know that. And we have two minus one, which is one. So giving you the answer of 10. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Tom left behind 10 guitars at Urara after he had made 24 with the senior fellas. So three examples there that uh, we've used a subtraction um, to help you with your counting, especially when we're counting backwards. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to call up our special guest um, to finish us off, um, who's going to have a go at your last row of your speed addition challenge. So I'm going to call up Ali, if you can come forward, my man. All right, take a seat over here. And as you can see on the screen there, Ali is going to have a go, just like uh, we have um, during this week, where um, a lot of our teachers had a go at this. And Ali is going to show us just how that uh, final row is done. So I'm going to count Mr. Ali down, and he's going to have a go at doing his best to see if he can complete that final row of the speed addition challenge. So I'll count you down, Ellie. Here we go. In three, two, one, go. Awesome. Well done. All right. So as you can see there, Ali has uh, finished off our final row for us. Thank you, Ellie. Congratulations on uh, finishing that off. A great role model for us to see that uh, Ali right here uh, live on, on studio has managed to finish that final row of our speed edition. Hopefully there's a great example for you guys also to complete that at home back in community your edition challenge and see if you can uh, have a lot of fun doing maths with your friends. So thank you very much Ali, you've been awesome. Let's have a look. What did we achieve today? We are able to count in twos to complete our two times tables task in our workbooks. We're also able to count backwards lots of times to understand repeated subtraction and we're able to complete the final row of our speed addition challenge thanks to Ali who has stepped up to the plate and been the very very first student to jump on our live stream right here at Urara College. So a great way, a fun way to finish off the week. We hope you've had fun with us. We've definitely had fun uh, tuning in and teaching our students this week. What was your highlight of the week, Mr. Max? Oh, there were so many things. I think I actually found all the different number problems with the actual people at our school quite fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, awesome. And I mean, I guess one of my highlights was definitely learning the different ways that we can use numbers to improve our maths. So we hope you have an awesome weekend. Stay safe. And we can't wait to come, um, tune in on Monday, same time, same place. Uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Good afternoon, everyone. In today's episode, we get to catch up with Mr. Cyril. We're currently at the Urara College Clontarf Academy, where he's currently working, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his life, also his footy career, and what he's up to now. Come with me. I hope you enjoy his story. I was born in Darwin, and as I, was, I think I was about six years old, I, um, my family, my parents uh, moved us over to the to the, uh, to the Chiwi Islands, over on Bathurst Island. Um, yeah, so basically, born and down and grew up on, on the Chiwi Islands. My current job uh, at the moment, I work with the Clontarf Foundation program, and um, I've enjoyed it, and obviously that uh, what I do is mentor and uh, help and support our young Indigenous men you know, through their education, basically. In my spare time, uh, I've enjoyed watching footy, whether it's on the TV or um, or even the local footy with a, at the moment, you know, currently I'm living in Alice Springs, so I enjoy going to the, um, the footy games, local games here, both the town competition and the uh, community competition, which is normally on Sundays. My earliest memory of playing footy, oh, that's a long time ago. Um, probably when I was mainly competition, probably 11 years of age. 
back on the Tiwi Islands. Um, we'd enjoy, you know, uh, up there in the territory, they are, you know, there's um, when they're basically starting to walk, you basically got a footy in your hand. So, um, and it's very strong, um, you know, footy things uh, up in Darwin or in the territory. So, probably around about yeah, eleven for me. My role models growing up, I'd have to say my older brothers. Obviously, there's eight boys, two girls, but the um, the six older brothers. Well, five older brothers, should I say, um, were into their footy. So I basically um, wanted to be like them, I guess, um, growing up. The most enjoyable um, part of the, the NTFL career is mainly um, the friendships you've made. You know, uh, you make it quite a few over the years. For me, you know, 20 plus years playing footy, so you do make, make a lot of mates, meet you know, a new friends. And then, you know, along the way, you're lucky enough to win some premierships. Probably winning, I think I've won 12 premierships there. So I played against a younger and an older brother and two of them. So, yeah, that was um, interesting. And you want it, you want it to be, um, you know, I guess, playing with your siblings on the, on the same side. But that's what happened and, you know, that's what it had to be. So I had to play against them. And I'm, you know, grateful and, and lucky enough to play in 12 winning ones. And then, I guess, in WA, I um, probably only played there three seasons all up. Um, got injured and just acquired a fair bit injuries. So I was mainly um, uh, frustrated trying to do, you know, a few pre-seasons and just breaking down So it, with injuries. So um, I decided to pack it up and head back to Darwin. My position that I played, when I first started, I guess I was pretty young and enthusiastic. Um, and I guess fitness was on my side at that age, uh, young age. I was a, a follower or a rover where I could run anywhere, you know, basically all around the ground. My strength um, was probably my tackling. Uh, I guess for me, I didn't want... Um, my opposition player to, you know, opposition players to, um, to get away. So I was quite, quite determined to, you know, stop them in their tracks by with some hard, aggressive tackling. And then as I got older, um, my coaches threw me, you know, put, placed me in the back in defence. So I guess, you know, once you're getting moved to the, to defence, it's another one more step away from over the fence and, your career's over, more or less. Well, playing at St Mary's, um, it was a very strong family oriented um, club, which I enjoyed. And uh, most of my family, I guess, um, played with them. And um, I don't know, I just felt, I just felt at home there, uh, very comfortable. And again, just uh, friends and your and your teammates around you at the club is, uh, yeah, kept you. You know, kept you quite, quite steady and and happy, I guess. The difference with the playing styles compare, you know, uh, for when I was playing it was obviously a lot more physical. wasn't as quick, whereas nowadays, you know, it's um, it's there's a lot more uh, running in it, um, and a lot, and, a lot, and a lot quicker, a lot faster. Should I say the ball movement, you know, to one ground, one up, one end to the other is uh, quite fast. And nowadays the fitness level of some players is amazing and they can run, you know. Um, you see nowadays in the AFL, they've, um, after a game, they, they're, um, they're checking the, um, after each game, the back of their Guernseys, the um, fitness guys are grabbing the um, GPSs out of, their, out of their Guernseys. So some of the, you know, some of the good runners and the best players can run to 20 to 30 Ks a game. I believe um, the difference in back of the day when I played, um, there wasn't much opportunity, I guess, um, in my opinion. Uh, whereas nowadays, um, there's a lot more in terms of a lot more scholarships, a lot more, um, uh, what do they call now, um, each AFL team has an area in the, um, in the NT, uh, the next generation. So. Um, 
they, you know, if, if you're good enough, you're able to get selected for those, uh, those next generation uh, academies. So, you know, there's a lot more chances these nowadays, in my opinion. As a father and, and an uncle, uh, watching my nephews, or my son and my nephews, sorry, um, be a part and in the AFL, um, yeah, it's a great honour to to what to, for them to to see them what they've yeah achieved and still are today. So um, uh, and with them, I guess it's helped them along the way with um, with being lucky enough to receive a um, scholarship uh, for their education. Firstly, um, that's the main thing, I guess. Yeah, you want to get an education behind you. And then, you know, second part of that, I guess, if you're good enough you know, and you work hard enough and make a few sacrifices, um, you know, you could be lucky um, getting selected to, uh, for an AFL team. Hardest thing about going to boarding school. Obviously, at the start, when you first move away, um, you're obviously, you're, you know, you're pretty, pretty young and you're quite new to to the um, boarding space. Um, and before, you know, leave, before leaving your community or home, you've always had family and friends around you, you know, um, going to school and also, you know, afterwards, after school. So hard things, obviously, when you're young, you didn't, you didn't really know anyone. Well, for me, I didn't know, know anyone at all. Um, when I first went away to boarding school. But, um, yeah, in the end, you, you do make a few friends. Quite a few of them come up to you and make you feel welcome, introduce themselves and, yeah, make you feel welcome. And they yeah, know it's always hard uh, to leave your community or leave home. Well, my advice for, for the young ones coming through is basically, obviously, you've got to work hard. Um, listen to your coaches. And now there is, um, for me, you've got to make a few sacrifices. And by that, uh, if you're lucky enough and really push uh, and try get away from home. Uh, when I say that, getting away from home, give it a go interstate, more or less, um, to really, you know, um, really work hard, as I said, and uh, and make those sacrifices. Well, my favourite AFL team that I followed was um, obviously the Hawthorne Footy Club. Uh, when my son was there, was lucky enough to play 10, you know, 10 seasons, should I say. And then, you know, was lucky enough to play in five grand finals with four, four winning premierships. So um, on that note, um, obviously I've got two nephews at Richmond and there's another one at West Coast. So I think I've got to, I've got to probably stick with um, probably got to stick with Hawthorne as my my favourite AFL team. Yeah, well, um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are, all over the NT or APY or Dumachi. Gulf Country, Catherine side, East Creole, West Creole, Western Desert. It's good to see you now. So, the story today, it's another story about the big land where Jesus was living. And in the middle of his land where he lives, there's another land called Samaria. And maybe they used to say something like um, Samaria, 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 we say, Samaria. They probably said Samaria. And the people who lived there, well, they were called Samaritans. So you know the story of the good Samaritan. And there's other stories about the Samaritans who all live in there, in that land. Samaria, right in the middle of Jesus' land. Now, the big city, Jerusalem, down south, Jesus 
home community up in the north. Every time he goes walking from his community down to the big city, he's got to cut through Samaria, Samaria, where the Samaritans all live in there. Now, a long time ago, his people, Jesus, and Samaritan people, there was like one tribe. But now, it's no good. His people and Samaritan people they don't get on anymore. They don't like to talk to each other. They don't want to marry each other. They don't want to eat from the same plate or drink from the same cup or get water from the same place. No. They want to stay. You mob that side, us mob that side. Trouble is, each time Jesus is taking a shortcut from his community down to the city Jerusalem, or coming back home, taking a shortcut, he's always cutting through that Samaria land. That's the story now. Jesus is cutting through back home, taking the shortcut, but he's got to go through Samaritan land. It's really hot, really hot day. About lunchtime, he sees a well. He thinks, I'll go and sit by the well. Maybe somebody will come with a bucket and they can get me a drink. So he's sitting there by this well. He's got no bucket. He's hoping somebody will come. Sure enough, middle of the day, a lady is coming. Now this lady is not from his people, Samaritan lady, because he's in Samaritan land. That's where the well is. It's a Samaritan well in Samaritan land. And he's sitting there. And this woman lady comes and he says to her, I'm really thirsty. Can you get me a drink, please? She says, hey. What are you doing? You can't ask me for a drink. I'm a Samaritan and you're not a Samaritan. What are you doing? We can't talk to each other. And Jesus says something very mysterious. He says, if you knew the full story, you'd be asking me for a drink. And she says to him, what are you talking about? Me ask you for a drink? You even got no bucket. How are you going to get me a drink with no bucket? And then she says, your people and my people, we worship God in two different ways. You worship on the mountain in Jerusalem and my people Samaritan. We're going to worship on this mountain in Samaritan country. See? Two different ways. Jesus says to her, you know what? Time is going to come soon when no one's going to do worshipping on any mountain at all. You're going to worship with your spirit and your heart and by being true. This Samaritan woman lady She's very interested in this. She's had a lot of trouble in her life. She's had five husbands. But she can see that Jesus is very kind. And she thinks maybe he's the one we've been waiting for. So she runs back into her village, her Samaritan village, and she says, Everybody, guess what? What? I think I've met the one we've been waiting for. And they believe her. And in the story, it says that because of what she says, all of them come running out to see Jesus, and they love him, and he loves them, 
and they say, hey, you should come back to our Samaritan village and stay with us. What are they doing? He's not from their people, but they don't care. They say, you should come, our village, stay with us, our place. And he goes to their Samaritan land, their Samaritan community. He stays with them, the story says, for two days, two days, eating and drinking and sharing plates and sharing cups and all the things he wasn't supposed to do. The Bible story says that because of that woman, her community came to love him. And later on, later on, she became a saint in the old, old church a long time ago. They said that Samaritan lady, she was a saint. And they called her Saint Fatina. And Fatina means light in the old Greek language. They said, you see, she brought the light to her community and she shared it with them. So they said, she is a saint. She bought the light. Saint Fatina. That's her name now. <laughs> so, all of you, wherever you are, is it morning or is it the afternoon or is it night time? Doesn't matter. I hope you take care of your family, take care of yourself. Look forward to seeing you back at Urara whenever you can get back here. Amen, amen. Welcome everybody, this is me and my brothers who just kicking back in the studio and this is dedicated to my Yanil and Garwa people. Shut up, RTL and BLA, let's go! Keep on rocking, keep on rocking, friends and family come together, one big mouth in common area. I'm a hunter, I'm a man, and I am proud of who I am. I'm proud of who I am. Robinson, we keep it real. My hometown, we do not steal. Daniel, Garo, speak the truth. Barefoot. Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to Urara. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to online learning for year nine. Thank you very much for turning up today. My name is Miss Elizabeth and I teach in the Year 9 and Year 10 classes. You are making a strong decision about your education simply by tuning in, so thank you for doing that. Next week, Miss Mandy will step in and she will be the front person for this segment. However, we've been looking at some interesting patterns, haven't we, this term? And there's a couple of new ones that I'd like to show it to you today and see how we could use these to help us solve problems. So let's get going. These online lessons are a bit unusual. If you go to the Arara College website and click on information, then you can find our maths book year nine maths. You do need to click two times and if the clinic or school will help out they may print the book for you. Let's check out year nine maths today. The introduction and welcome, come in and stay, thank you, listen and watch. The lesson is writing large numbers using shapes the do part is showing large numbers on a model and of course you can ask questions. Let's listen and watch. Today we will go back and use the words and numbers that we had earlier in the booklet. And these are the words that are written out for each of the numbers. We will also use symbols to help us write large numbers. On this side you will see there is a cube which represents a group of 1,000. 
a flat square and it represents a group of 100. A long skinny tower represents a group of 10 and one block on its own represents a single one. So these are the symbols that we will use in our next questions. Let's look at this question. What is this number? We can recognize some of these shapes. Let's draw up a table so that we can solve this problem. So in this table, we will have thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. And we will write down how many of each there are in the number problem. Let's get started. We can see there are two cubes. So in this thousand column, we will write two. Great work. Now there are four flat squares, so we will write four in the hundred column. Let's count these towers. Yes, there are three. And lastly, there are five ones. So this number is two, four, three, five. But let's write it out in words. We have two thousand four hundred and we don't write three ten five one we write thirty five very good work very good work indeed what about this number i'm pretty sure you can solve this so one block is a hundred and two small blocks one flat square is 100 and two small blocks is 2. But mm, we have a gap in the middle. I wonder what we could put in here. Looks as though it needs something. So we usually put a 0. 1, 0, 2. And that makes sure we don't write 12. So in words, it is 100 and... Two. Good work. Good work. And what about this one? You can go ahead and you can answer that out easily by yourself, I'm pretty sure. So yes, we have 1,000. We have 5 in the hundreds. We have 1 tower, so that is 110. Good work. And then we've got a space. Well, I wonder what we could put in here. I bet you know. Yes, you are right. We have to put a zero in here to make sure we don't write 151. We need 1510 because the number is 1500 and yes, 10. Good work. That's great work. And let's go on and work this one through. Good 3,000, lovely 400, five tens, good work, and one by itself. Great. So the number is 3451. And we would say in words 3,400 and... 51. Great! Let's have a look at this way of writing our large numbers. Call this an abacus because there are counters for the numbers that we want. And let's see if we can solve these types of problems. We look on the abacus for the words that we will put the numbers into. We have thousands and six, so we colour in six of the little circles. Next, we have hundreds, and we colour in nine of these. Good work. Now to the tens, correct, and we will colour in three, and also to the ones, and we will colour in seven. So we have 
made a diagram of this same number. Let's write it in words. 6,900. Well done. And that's right, 37. Great work. In the thousands, we have five circles. Hundreds, mm, no circles at all coloured. Tens, we have two circles. And in the ones, we have seven circles. Great work. Oops, I forgot to write the number. There we go. Let's write this number in words. 5,000. There are no hundreds, so we leave that and write and 27. In this type of problem, we are taking a number already given to us and we want to put it onto this abacus and the columns. Yes. We and need to start at the very last number that you can see and it goes into our box first. So the last number here is 6 and it will go into the 1's column first. Then we will put the 8 into the 10's column, that's right. And the 9 will move into the 100's column. Good work. Now we can easily put it onto our abacus. 9 in the 100's column. 8 in the tens column and of course 6 circles coloured in in the ones column. That's really good. This is a trick that we have to remember when using abacus and charts. So let's write the number in words 900 and together that's right 80. Let's check the spelling. Good work. 86. Awesome. Let's check this one. Good, we start at that very end number in the ones column, then two in the tens, nothing in that hundreds, so we have to write a zero, good, good, and the three in the thousands. Now we can easily put this onto our abacus. There we are, three circles, three thousand. In the hundreds, there's nothing, so we don't actually color any circles. In the tens, we have two circles covered, coloured, and in the ones, we have nine circles coloured in. Great, great work. Let's write this number in words. 3,000, no hundreds, and good, 20. Let's check the spelling. Good work. 3,029. Awesome work. Well done. Let's check our progress for the day. If there are any problems, welcome, ask someone. Come in and or stay, once we get our links all fixed up, the then you'll be able to write a note in and, and we can follow again. Best thing to do, if possible, go back onto YouTube or Facebook later on and watch it over so that you get that pattern well in well your head. Well done. Stay safe, stay strong and see you next time. Hello and welcome to Friday. I'm Miss Mandy and I'm here for your IL lesson. So today we're going to be listening to Ruben for our last talk about Bush Tucker and then we're heading to the end of the workbook, pages 20 and 21. Make sure you look out for the next set of workbooks in the post. Let's go. that can give you flavour to food. There's a few things. We've got mint in the area, which is a native mint tree, little tree it is. And we've also got native lemongrass. So when I give this to that uh, young lady here holding the camera, and she has a smell of this, she might tell you it smells a bit, really strong lemongrass smell. Uh, yeah, very 
Yeah, very much like lemon and citrusy. So that's growing all around Alice Springs in different areas. But then when you look at it, there's 27 different type of grass. Plus, basically you're looking for that little flower there and a really sort of a light greenish. It's a light green sort of leaf to it. And, um, and you'll know that's lemongrass by just having a quick smell and that will tell you if it's lemongrass. But yeah, look for the leaf, the type of leaf, and look for that grass as a little bit of a light colour. Alrighty, we want to go show you some more bush tucker now. That's just two there we've got out of the way now. Alrighty. Now everyone, this one here that I've got a hold of, this is one of the acacia family. There's about 3,000 acacias worldwide in Australia, all through the arid area. We've got well over 500 up to 900 plus acacias. This particular acacia you're looking at here, you can actually get the seed pods and you can roast them up, put them under ground oven and you can actually eat the seeds out of the seed pods from dead finish. This is called dead finish, the common name. But also scientifically, if you grab one of these sharp leaves, it's a real sharp leaf, it's like a pin or a needle. What you do is you put that into a wart for an hour and then take it out and continually do that for a week. By the end of the week, the wart is said to go brown, die and drop off. So dead finish. And the reason why it's called dead finish, two reasons. One, the early settlers when they were riding their horses, if they ever came across a wall of this, dead finish. They had to go around and come back. But the other main saying is, dead finish if you ever see cattle feeding on the dead finish you know that that is the end of the desert because that will always be the last plant that survives in our australian desert is dead finish so if any cattle are feeding on it find your way rapidly out of the arid region because there's no water left and no food left and the animals are starting to eat a desperate tree so yeah dead finish and also me medical use and traditional food as well we're going to take you up and show you the witchetty bush now that's only just up the path up there this is another acacia this one very popular to a lot of people know this one this one is basically your witchetty bush which is your acacia they do have scientific names i apologize for the lack of scientific name but the witchetty bush, a lot of people associated the witchetty bush with the witchetty grub. But they didn't realise that there's probably another three or four trees that you'll actually find the witchetty grub. But because we've got the witchetty bush here, a good example of how the traditional people used to get it. In the old days, a lot of the animals would clear the bottom. Your mala, your bilby, your bedongs. There was a million each of these animals and they were always clearing under the trees. So the traditional people would come along and look under the tree for cracks in the ground. And the crack in the ground was normally after the rain because the caterpillar in the root system, that witchetty grub has expanded. So the ladies would look for cracks in the ground. That would indicate to them that that caterpillar is getting bigger. They would then dig that up. But modern day, it's a lot harder now because there's a lot of leaf litter sitting under the trees. So the ladies literally have to get there with a rake sometimes and actually rake it out. In the old days, you would never have to do that. But it's because we've got 8 million cats in the wild in Australia that are taking out hundreds of thousands of mammals every year. So we need those animals back but we can never release them back in the wild because there's too many cats. So what we used to do is now we can't do it. We have to do a little bit more raking. But yeah, that's your witchetty bush. It's an acacia. Remember, there's that little bit of a saying somewhere in Australia, there's always an acacia flowering. We are on the last double page, page 20 and page 21. I am so proud of you. You're doing really, really well. This page is super simple. I just want you to look at these and think, which ones have you tried? Which ones haven't you tried? So I know that I've tried bush banana and kwandong. Okay, it's meant to be a G on the end there. Did I miss that out? I'm sorry. Maybe chat to some of your friends or your family if there's ones that you've not tried. 
you could ask them if they've tried them and what they taste like um, but it's all right if you haven't I'm just curious okay let's go to then the very last page page 21 well done now for this page you're gonna find an adult so here at the top it says find an adult or an older family member to talk to about their experiences of bush tucker you're going to ask them the questions below and write down their answers so see who's free see who's not busy who's around who you could talk to and I want you to give them a little interview okay so ask when did you first go out to find bush tucker so how old were they who did they go with where did they go and I'm sure you can think of lots more questions and I want you to really listen and then you're going to write your answers in these lines just as we've been doing for the rest of the booklet. Then I want you to ask, what was different in the old days? Were there more animals around? Were there more plants? Were they easier to find or were they harder to find? So yeah, what was different when they were young to now? And I'm sure that you'll get some great information from your family or friends. And then lastly, how does the weather affect what you can find? So I'd love to know from your friends or relatives, how is it different when it's been really rainy or when it's really dry? What is it like in different seasons or even just when, it's had, when we've had a really wet couple of years or a really dry couple of years? How is it different when it's hot or when it's colder? So if you can get on with asking your grown up some of these questions, write down the answers, you will have then finished this booklet. Well done. Now, if there are any pages that you've missed, it'd be really great if you could go back and try and jot down a few sentences to fill them in. But I want you to know that just tuning in, listening, thinking, and giving it a go has been a great decision for your learning. Well done. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are, all over the NT or APY or Dumachi, Gulf Country, Catherine Side, East Creole, West Creole, Western Desert. It's good to see you now. So, the story today, it's another story about the big land where Jesus was living. And in the middle of his land where he lives, there's another land called Samaria. And maybe they used to say something like um, Samaria, 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 we say Samaria. They probably said Samaria, and the people who lived there, well, they were called Samaritans. So you know the story of the Good Samaritan, and there's other stories about the Samaritans who all live in there, in that land, Samaria, right in the middle of Jesus' land. Now, the big city, Jerusalem, down south, Jesus' home community up in the north. Every time he goes walking from his community down to the big city, he's got to cut through Samaria, Samaria, where the Samaritans all live in there. Now, a long time ago, his people, Jesus, and Samaritan people, there was like one tribe. But now, it's no good. His people and Samaritan people, they don't get on anymore. They don't like to talk to each other. They don't want to marry each other. They don't want to 
eat from the same plate or drink from the same cup or get water from the same place, no. They want to stay, you mob that side, us mob that side. Trouble is, each time Jesus is taking a shortcut from his community down to the city, Jerusalem, or coming back home, taking a shortcut, he's always cutting through that Samaria land. That's the story now. Jesus is cutting through back home, taking the shortcut, but he's got to go through Samaritan land. It's really hot, really hot day. About lunchtime, he sees a well. He thinks, I'll go and sit by the well. Maybe somebody will come with a bucket and they can get me a drink. So he's sitting there by this well. He's got no bucket. He's hoping somebody will come. Sure enough, middle of the day, a lady is coming. Now this lady is not from his people. Samaritan lady, because he's in Samaritan land. That's where the well is. It's a Samaritan well in Samaritan land. And he's sitting there. And this woman lady comes and he says to her, I'm really thirsty, can you get me a drink, please? She says, hey, what are you doing? You can't ask me for a drink. I'm a Samaritan and you're not a Samaritan. What are you doing? We can't talk to each other. And Jesus says something very mysterious. He says, if you knew the full story, you'd be asking me for a drink. And she says to him, what are you talking about? Me ask you for a drink? You even got no bucket. How are you going to get me a drink with no bucket? And then she says, your people and my people we worship God in two different ways. You worship on the mountain in Jerusalem and my people Samaritan. We're going to worship on this mountain in Samaritan country. See? Two different ways. Jesus says to her, you know what? Time is going to come soon when no one's going to do worshiping on any mountain at all. You're going to worship with your spirit and your heart and by being true. This Samaritan woman lady, she's very interested in this. She's had a lot of trouble in her life. She's had five husbands. But she can see that Jesus is very kind and she thinks, maybe he's the one we've been waiting for. So she runs back into her village, her Samaritan village. And she says, everybody, guess what? What? I think I've met the one we've been waiting for. And they believe her. And in the story, it says that because of what she says, all of them come running out to see Jesus and they love him and he loves them and they say, hey, you should come back to our Samaritan village and stay with us. What are they doing? He's not from their people, but they don't care. They say, you should come our village, stay with us, our place. And he goes to their Samaritan land, their Samaritan community he stays with them, the story says, for two days, two days, eating and drinking and sharing plates and sharing cups and all the things he wasn't supposed to do. The Bible story says that because of that woman, her community 
came to love him. And later on, later on, she became a saint in the old, old church a long time ago. They said that Samaritan lady, she was a saint. And they called her Saint Fatina. And Fatina means light in the old Greek language. They said, you see, she brought the light to her community and she shared it with them. So they said, she is a saint. She brought the light. Saint Fatina, that's her name now. <laughs> so all of you, wherever you are, is it morning or is it the afternoon or is it nighttime? Doesn't matter. I hope you take care of your family, take care of yourself. Look forward to seeing you back at Urara whenever you can get back here. Amen, amen. To my brothers out there that struggle. Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to Urara. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Today, here at Urara, it's Friday, and we're having a good day. It's warm outside, and we were very lucky because we had morning tea with Clontarf, and they gave us some eggs and bacon and wraps, some pineapple, fruit juice. So we're feeling pretty good and wish you were here. Now today we are doing our last lesson on place value. And here are the words you'll be considering. Million, 100,000, 10,000, thousand, 100, 10 and 1. So we're looking at the big numbers today right up to a million. Now if we could have a look at the PowerPoint slide, thanks miss. Your worksheet will be finding the missing place value from a four-digit number. As you can see here, we're doing six today just for fun. On the next slide, thank you. Uh, your numbers, especially the big numbers, are divided up after every three digits. So you use a comma to make these numbers easier to say and read. So moving from the uh, right of the chart where the ones are, you move to the left and you put a comma in there and that makes your first thousand and then your 10,000, your 100,000 and you put a comma there because you've moved another three across. So when you write one million, you have a one, a comma, three zeros like I said and then another comma here and another three zeros. So three comma, three comma, it's easy to read. Okay, let's have a look at the next slide. The next slide would be read as 4,528. Now, do you know, see how you always say, <coughs> excuse me, and 28? It's just something we do, I don't know why. But this number is not written correctly. What's wrong with it? It doesn't have a comma after the four. Next slide, thanks. So the commas make the numbers easier to read. So there you go, go again, 7,000, comma after the seven, and then your 213, your decimal point, and the six. Today we're not doing decimal points. But Dave and I are going to have a little play around underneath the camera. I'll put my mask on. Afternoon, Dave. Afternoon, Ms. Andrea. Okay. How does this number read? What's that? So that, that number reads 3,447, Miss. Excellent. So they're asking us to put the words into the correct position. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with the thousands. Then you can do the next one. All right, no worries. There's 3,000. 3,000. 400. That's right. 
and four tens and seven ones that's right so three thousands four hundreds four tens and seven ones that was too easy yeah. now the reason why i like maths is because they always try and trick you so keep your eye on what we're doing here now this number four thousand five hundred and ninety three They've got it in order here. Four thousand five hundred nine tens ninety three ones. Yep. Now, what did I tell you, Dave? What's happening here? Four eight zero nine. Are these running in that way? No, they're, they're, they've mixed it up for you. They've mixed it up on you, and you, the, the 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 digits are in different orders, Miss. That's right. So, can you start with the thousands and find that? Yeah, sure. Thousands. Four thousand. Four thousand. Yep. Go ahead. 4,000, and then we've got the hundreds, miss. Hundreds is the first one on, in the order, and that's eight. 800, and then we have, ten, we, have, we have the tens up here, and it's zero tens, and nine ones, miss. So Excellent. 4,809. Good. Now, the last one. Have they got the thousands at the top here for us? No, they don't. No, they're tricking us again. Yeah. So, thousands. How many thousands, please, Dave? 3,000. So I've got to make sure I put that number in the right place, not up here like in the first one, because they're tricking us. How many hundreds? Hundreds. There is 100 written up. It's the second digit, 100. Up here. So we've done the 3,000, the 100. How many tens? There are nine tens up on, the, on that list, miss, on that number, rather. Nine tens. And any ones? Uh, zero. No, no ones. Zero ones. OK. So we've got this all in order but we've had to do it another way around. And what do I need here? You need a comma to, to pronunciate the fact that it's a 3,000 number. Dead right, Dave. Yep. Okay, last sheet. Let's have some fun with this. So we're going to create our own numbers. And Dave's going to throw the dice and I'm going to write the numbers down. All right, here we go. Go ahead. Just a simple two. Gonna do it six times, thanks, Dave. Okay. Two. Try and get some sixes. Ah. Three. I'll try, miss. I'll try and get sixes for you. Yeah, there's you look, a see? Six. There's a six. I've got one, two, three, four, five. One more number, please, Dave. And a three. And a three. Okay, we might do it quickly one more time. Sure. Much quicker this time. Okay. Two, four, three, four, two. Try for a six. Uh, uh, no sixes that time. Five. Okay, let's go to the board. Thanks for your help, Dave. No worries. Oh, you can hang around if you want. Sure, sure. All right, then. So, we're going to do it in the same way with this one. We're going to do it nice and big. So, our first number was two. And we're going to put that in the million. Then we're going to do 500,000. 20,000, because it's two tens. 3,000. Two, five, two, three. You want me to roll you another number, miss? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, one more number, please, sure. Dave. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to roll <laughs> another number. It's a one. Okay, and then another number for the other set too. We made a mistake. All right, that, that was a three, miss. Okay, good. The other number's a three. Now, if you try and read that number, let's write it a lot closer here so you can see it. It's impossible to say, isn't it? So we need to work across here by our threes and put the comma in for a thousand and again here. So now we know we can say the number is 2,523,631. Let's do the next one. Do you want to say this as I write it in, Dave? Sure, sure. 2, Two million, 400,000, uh, 30, 2,230,000. 2,430,000. Yep. 4,000. 4,000, yep. 200. 
Oh, I'm sorry. 400. And? 25. Okay. 2,434,000. 400, 425. It's a big number, miss. It is a big number. And it's much easier to see yeah, yeah. and say when we write it like this. Absolutely. So let's compare the two numbers. The first one again, 2,500,000. 23,631. Okay. Who can tell me which is the bigger number of those two, starting from the left? So they're both 2,000,000. I reckon it must be this one, miss. Because? The five's larger than the four. Excellent. And that's what we're talking about in place value. You know the, where the value is, and just by these single numbers, and sometimes the people will work, use the word digits, which it means the same as numbers. Okay, let's quickly close up with the last slide, which is our time sheet, uh, our worksheet. I can take this off now, Dave, if you move yep. a little bit aside. No Thank worries. you. Thank you, Miss. Uh, watch out for tricks. Some numbers are in the wrong order. So you've got your, the number you're looking for at the end, 1,780, and they've started with a zero, and then there's a space. But as you can see, you've got your 780 there. So what, <clears throat> what's the missing number? Say the number in your head, 1,780. We're missing the 1,000. Second one, 4 plus 4,000 plus 20. Have a look at your number on the right. And you've got two four starting numbers and a two. So obviously the eight is missing. And the place value of the 8 is in the 800 section. Last slide, thanks, miss. Okay, a big number scramble. Thank you for listening. Uh, over and out from Miss Andrea and Mr Dave, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Take care.
afternoon, you wonderful mob. And like Miss Andrea said, it is Friday. Yes, weekend time. Looking forward to, to take a, a little break. Not much, but a little break. Hope you are looking forward as well to the break. Um, integrated Learning, that's me again today. And high five, welcome back. Thank you very much, Mr. Tyson and Ms. Rebecca. Mr. Paul, I didn't get a high five. It's okay, Mr. Paul is in, he's in his own world right there. Uh, <laughs> okay, so today's topic is going to be all about punctuation marks. What is it? Why do we need it? And how do we use it? Let's have a look at what it is first. That's a video. Okay, now that we've seen our full stop, our comma, what is the function of the punctuation marks? Um, if you look at the next slide, it says punctuation marks are used to separate letters, words, and sentences. Now, to help us, to help us remember what punctuation marks we're going to look at today, um, let's have a look at the next slide. And I worked out on a word. Um, I had face QC. Now, a quick word of, of, of fun. Last night when I worked on this, I, I, I had one face and a Q. And then this morning, I'm like, capital letters, where does that fit in? And it turns out it's actually part of punctuation marks. It's not a mark, but it's the best place to, ch to teach capital letters because without, you cannot have a full stop, which is our first F, full stops, if we do not have a capital letter. Because remember, our sentence starts with a capital letter and it ends with a full stop. All right? So that is our first punctuation mark we're going to look at is our full stop. The next one we're going to look at is our apostrophe mark. Um, I didn't have pictures there, but our apostrophe is words, our little comma on top, when we use they're doing it, we're doing it, and his clothes is dirty. Right. Our next one, like I said, capital letters. So you have your full stop, your apostrophe, and your capital letters. Our next one, our pink one, is our exclamation mark. Those are the one, that's the one that looks that like a line with a dot underneath. That's our exclamation mark, the one that you use at the end of a sentence when you scream, you're scared, you're excited, you're happy. You use that one. Question mark says it all. You use it at the end of a question. And then the last one is our comma. It is used when you make a list of things. I like apples, comma, pears, comma, bananas, comma, and oranges. Now, to help us figure out how it actually works, the only way we can do it is by looking at our little passage on our desk right here. Um, we have a little passage by of Aussie animals. It's not famous. It's the down camera. Yeah, so um, there it is. There is our Aussie animals. But let's look at this. 
There is our passage, and we are going to read. There are so many amazing and unique Australian animals. Have you ever seen a platypus? They like a strange mix of beaver and duck. Another funny looking Aussie animal is the echidna. They covered in spikes and have a long pointy nose for sticking into ants nest. What is your favorite Australian animal? Did you understand that? <laughs> you did, Mr. Tyson? Tyson. Is that how it, you, you are, To me, it was one long <laughs> sentence. But there needs to be some capital letters. There need to be some full stops. So we are going to look at our full stops. We're going to look at our question marks. And which words are going to be? capital letters. Now, what did we say? We start our sentence with a capital letter. So, there's our first sentence. That is supposed to have a capital letter. So, there are many, so many amazing and unique Australian animals. End of our first sentence. And we make a dot. What comes after our full stop? Another capital letter. There it is. We should have an H there and a T there. Have you ever seen a platypus? What, what did I just asked the question? That should have been a question mark right there. And then again, they look like a strange mix of a beaver and a duck. Full stop. Now, I am sure some of you has picked up that this is a lot of spelling mistakes as well. And I agree, many like, but today we are just looking at our full stops, sorry, our full stops and our capital letters. Um, our, another capital letter after the full stop. Another funny looking Aussie. Oh, look, I missed out Australia. Mr. Tyson, you didn't tell me. Australia is supposed to have a capital letter. Oh. I completely missed it. Mr. Tyson, Australia is supposed to have... See, teachers make mistakes as well. There, we missed out on Australia. And there's our Aussie. Also a capital letter. So, another funny looking Aussie animal is the echidna. And again, there's our full stop. They... And there's our apostrophe, there. That means they are covered in spikes and have a long pointy nose for sticking into ants' nests. And that's a full stop. After the full stop, a capital letter. What is your favorite? And Australia needs a capital letter, animal. What is your favorite Australian animal? And again, we ask a question. And there needs to be a question mark. Now, I know the workbook, um, worksheet in your workbook is a bit different. You need to match your workers. But you also have choose three jobs and write your own sentences about them. Now, remember, our sentences start with a full stop. Oh, sorry. Starts with a capital letter. And it ends with a full stop. And hopefully, that helps you out a little bit with punctuation. And we'll most probably cover it again in a few weeks' time. So, that takes me to the end of my lesson. And it is a TTFN for all you wonderful people. Enjoy the weekend and bye-bye. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are, all over the NT or APY or Dumachi, Gulf Country, Catherine Side, East Creole, West Creole, Western Desert. It's good to see you now. So, the story today, it's another story about the big land where Jesus was living and in the middle of his land where he lives there's another land called Samaria 
And maybe they used to say something like, um, Samaria, 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 we say, Samaria. They probably said Samaria. And the people who lived there, well, they were called Samaritans. So you know the story of the Good Samaritan. And there's other stories about the Samaritans who all live in there in that land, Samaria, right in the middle of Jesus' land. Now, the big city, Jerusalem, down south, Jesus' home community up in the north. Every time he goes walking from his community down to the big city, he's got to cut through Samaria, Samaria, where the Samaritans all live in there. Now, a long time ago, his people, Jesus, and Samaritan people, there was like one tribe. But now, it's no good. His people and Samaritan people they don't get on anymore. They don't like to talk to each other. They don't want to marry each other. They don't want to eat from the same plate or drink from the same cup or get water from the same place, no. They want to stay, you mob that side, us mob that side. Trouble is, each time Jesus is taking a shortcut from his community down to the city, Jerusalem, or coming back home, taking a shortcut, he's always cutting through that Samaria land. That's the story now. Jesus is cutting through back home, taking the shortcut, but he's got to go through Samaritan land. It's really hot, really hot day. About lunchtime, he sees a well. He thinks, I'll go and sit by the well. Maybe somebody will come with a bucket and they can get me a drink. So he's sitting there by this well. He's got no bucket. He's hoping somebody will come. Sure enough, middle of the day, a lady is coming. Now this lady is not from his people. Samaritan lady, because he's in Samaritan land. That's where the well is. It's a Samaritan well in Samaritan land. And he's sitting there. And this woman lady comes and he says to her, I'm really thirsty, can you get me a drink, please? She says, hey, what are you doing? You can't ask me for a drink. I'm a Samaritan and you're not a Samaritan. What are you doing? We can't talk to each other. And Jesus says something very mysterious. He says, if you knew the full story, you'd be asking me for a drink. And she says to him, what are you talking about? Me ask you for a drink? You even got no bucket. How are you going to get me a drink with no bucket? And then she says, your people and my people we worship God in two different ways. You worship on the mountain in Jerusalem and my people, Samaritan. We're going to worship on this mountain in Samaritan country. See? Two different ways. Jesus says to her, you know what? Time is going to come soon when no one's going to do worshiping on any mountain at all. You're going to worship with your spirit and your heart and by being true. This Samaritan woman lady, she's very interested in this. She's had a lot of trouble in her life. She's had five husbands. 
but she can see that Jesus is very kind and she thinks maybe he's the one we've been waiting for her. so she runs back into her village her Samaritan village and she says everybody guess what what I think I've met the one we've been waiting for and they believe her and in the story it says that because of what she says all of them come running out to see Jesus and they love him and he loves them and they say hey you should come back to our Samaritan village and stay with us what are they doing he's not from their people but they don't care they say you should come our village stay with us our place and he goes to their Samaritan land their Samaritan community he stays with them the story says for two days two days eating and drinking and sharing plates and sharing cups and all the things he wasn't supposed to do the Bible story says that because of that woman her community came to love him and later on later on she became a saint in the old old church long time ago they said that Samaritan lady she was a saint and they called her Saint Fatina and Fatina means light in the old Greek language they said you see she brought the light to her community and she shared it with them so they said she is a saint she brought the light Saint Fatina that's her name now <laughs> so all of you wherever you are is it morning or is it the afternoon or is it night time doesn't matter I hope you take care of your family take care of yourself look forward to seeing you back at Urara whenever you can get back here amen amen you ain't ready you, you, you ain't ready you, you, you ain't you ain't ready for change <laughs> You can make the changes Coming home in the paddy wagon Probably cause of the window you were smashing Then with your friends the next day at school bragging And maybe wagging with your pants swagging Talking about this and that Looking at your friends you wanna copy that Don't be a copycat Cause you will fall and stumble Can't trust anybody these days And friendly get you in trouble Drinking grog, smoking drug Puffing and sniffing on the spray Damaging you your lungs, letting in the chemical gas You ain't no gangster with your red and blue rags It's Australia, represent the flag In the darkness, trying to find my way Yeah, I keep my motion flow going Just shout it out, got a lot going on My thoughts in my mind, making me blind It's okay, let me freestyle and with my rhyme I hate it when the kids getting caught up Paving their life for crime Looking at you, you think it's a movie I know, goofy, I'm my dark side Trying to find the light Go home now and hurry Stop making your mom and dad worry Getting cop chase Better tighten up your shoelace Get ready to own up to your mistakes Kids, parents going to prison Parents, kids don't listen Late at night they're missing Walking around town all night Think you're cool, but you're a fool You know that ain't Good morning! Hey, hey. Welcome back to your Senior students, if you've been listening to the lesson drill already today, you would have heard a few good to see you's, but it is good to see you. So hope you, hopefully you tuned in. Hopefully you got the jokes yesterday. Hopefully you didn't go deaf from me singing to you, but we got through all that, so that's good. So I want to start off with a couple more jokes today. So what time does a duck wake up? Wakes at the quack of down. <laughs> okay. 
Hey, do you know, some people, particularly the French people, they eat snails. Seems they don't like fast food. <laughs> okay. Have you heard of the one about the skunk? Never mind, it really stinks. <laughs> Was at the MCG a few months ago. It's always windy in big sports arenas with all those fans. <laughs> How do mountains stay warm in the winter? They've got snow caps. No. Okay, what happens to a frog's car when it breaks down? It gets towed away. <laughs> what do you call a pile of kittens? A mountain. <laughs> and lastly, is this pool safe for diving? It deep ends. <laughs> okay, and there's a round of applause from this small crowd in here, but um, anyway, hey, we've been looking at cigarettes for, what's it, about two weeks? Three weeks now. Three weeks it must be. So, um, and this week we've looked at second-hand smoke, third-hand smoke, and I can't remember what we looked at yesterday, but that's okay. We're sort of, but we're, we're looking at the song. Uh, the song about lung cancer, the main disease that the major disease that comes from smoking is lung cancer, and you know, and when you look at it in the context of having, you know, if I'm breathing in your smoke or someone else's smoke, or it's affecting me because it's on my clothes or in the walls or wherever, it, in the couch, wherever it is, it's affecting me. And lung cancer is a major disease, kills more people. Do you remember that figure from two days ago? How many thousand? 21,000 people a year, in Australia, just in Australia alone. So that, that's a lot. So, you know, we need, we need to try and stop that. I don't want to be a statistic. I don't want you to be a statistic that you're, oh, Look, they're one of the 21,000. No, we want long lives, we want good lives, and part of that is giving up on smoking. So today, we're, look, the heading on today actually says that it's Monday the 28th, which is still a couple of days away yet. But we're looking at the whole idea of quitting. And on the TV, on the radio, you would have seen, and maybe you know, posters and things, you might have seen the whole thing about quit. And there's a quit helpline so that you can ring up, you can get support doing in the process of quitting. Uh, we had one of the, the new um, LSOs showing a little bit about the puffer that he, he uses as a part of his quitting. And we're going to look at something else that he uses as well at the end of this. That There's lots of ways that people can do it. But it, it's making that conscious choice of knowing that you need to do it and working your way through, even though your body's going, I need a smoke. Or it's, it's just when you've got that whole habit thing of reaching out or asking someone or you know, out lighting up a, a fag or something. And, and here we are, we're trying to, to give up, but it's breaking those habits, getting out of those routines and hopefully getting a whole new, fresh look on life. So, let's have a look at the worksheet that we've got today. It says, um, list, so it's about quitting, like I said. List three reasons why it is a good idea to quit smoking. Three reasons. Straight away, I can think, well, I'm not going to be, you should know the answers. Write them down there. Should I give you one? What do you think, Miss Rebecca? Should I give them one? Just one, okay. What about financial reasons? Do you remember how much? If you smoked a pack a day for a whole year, that's something like $16,000 you'd save. You could use that for all sorts of things. And we'll look at a bit more of that in a minute. Okay, but you need three reasons, three good reasons to quit smoking. Why is it difficult to quit smoking? Two reasons why it's difficult to smoke, uh, difficult to give up. What, why doesn't your body want you to give up? What, what's happening to it? 
And again, I, I don't, if I put it there, you're just going to copy the answer down. So I want you to be thinking. You're intelligent people and you need to you know, put it down and say, well, these are two good reasons why um, it's difficult to quit smoking. Third question is what are three ways that will help you to quit cigarettes? Three ways to help quit. Or, yeah, quit cigarettes. And even that word quit could be one of them, that, that you could use the, the quit helpline. I'll give you this one because I've talked about it already today. But that, that's one way to do it. Is that often when we, when we want to change habits, when we're trying to get rid of our addictions, we need support. And that might be um, that it's just ringing up someone and, and getting that connection to someone. It might be that you're reaching out to a, a friend, a relative, your father, someone who can hold you accountable to help you quit. Say, hey, how's it going? You're still, you're still on track and not giving up and you are giving up on the cigarettes. And then you're, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And even if it means starting again, but you've got to keep at it to finish up and, and you can beat this. Okay. Now, there was a little advertisement there. And if you were to search up um, about cigarette ads, you can see all sorts of things. And... Um, I mean, I, I know I've seen it with you know, teeth that are looking horrible. Uh, other people that have got a hole in their throat be, where they're breathing, but you, know, you can even see them sometimes smoking through that hole. And, because what it's trying to, those ads are trying to do is to shock people into realising, oh, this could happen to me long term, but this could happen to me in the future. So if I stop now, I'm stopping me getting to that. And if you look at the, on, on the packets of cigarettes, um, you'll, you'll see they've got some graphic pictures there of maybe feet that are gangrene or someone that's lost some fingers or something that, or some lungs that are looking really horrible and black. Those pictures are there to shock us a little bit, even though I guess many cigarette smokers have seen that picture so often they probably don't even see it anymore. They just look straight past it to the cigarettes that are inside. But we need to stop, look at the packet and realise this is something that could happen to me, so I'm going to stop now and throw it and you know, discard it. So what are three reasons... Um, sorry, after watching it, how does it leave you feeling? You know, when you've seen some of those ads or even when I was talking about it, how do you feel about that? Do you think this ad is a good one? Why and why not? Is it a good idea to try and shock you, to show you, show you something horrible to turn you off it? Maybe. But I want your opinion. Okay, the last point on this page is that in the NT, there were 45 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that were referred to Quitline in 2016 and... 51 in 2017. So you think of the hundreds, possibly thousands of Indigenous people that are smoking in the Northern Territory and one year only uh, 45 people rang up to say, hey, can you help me stop smoking? The next year, 51 rang up. Is that a good result? Would you have expected more? You tell, you tell me, do people, do, do family or friends that you know that do smoke, do they ever talk about quitting? Do you think they want to do that? Or, or is it something they don't think about? But, um, you know, I, I was a bit surprised at the, at the low numbers that, that were there that were actually ringing up looking for help. So the two questions are, is quit line a good idea? Why or why not? You know, is it a good idea that you can ring someone to ask for help? You know, maybe that's a way that you can get access to patches or something that might, um, you know, help you to get through the, this, the hard time of, of actually giving up. And the second question is, what could be done to make it more effective? You know, is there a better way? Because no way is perfect, but maybe you go, oh, 
I, the way you should quit is you do this and this and this. Well, write it down. Tell, tell us. You know, maybe there's something we can pass on to Congress or, or someone to, they, they can get out there because you might have just the idea that's going to help someone else. Now, the next page, there's a crossword. And um, you can do that. Smart, smarter than smoking crossword. And fill in the gaps there. So in the, first up is the down words. So down here, number one down. There are over 4,000 somethings in cigarette smoke. And it starts with a C. So if I look down here, ah, it could be cancer. C-A-N-C-E. No, it's not cancer. So there are over 4,000 somethings in, a, in cigarette smoke. You complete that. Flo th Flo's finding my um, presentation <laughs> amusing at the moment, but let's not worry about her. And what I want to show you is, um, so what's the, the LSO that came and showed is? Misha. Misha, that's it. Misha was, uh, this is a photograph of an app he has on his phone. Now this was taken probably 30 days, like a month ago, but it says, here is a photo of a teacher's phone who is giving up smoking. They have been 37 days without a cigarette and have saved $1,257 after 37 days. I mean, he's actually, he's already talking about, he's, he might even go on a holiday this year because he's saved some money rather than it all just going up in smoke in a cigarette. He's also avoided 8,736 milligrams of tar going into his body. Two, two things that each day you can look at that app and go, oh, look at what I've saved. Oh, look at how good, what I've done to my body. This is really good. And it's just an encouragement to keep going. Because often you, you just go, ah, oh, what's it matter? I'll have one more. And then you start again. And then you've got to try and start giving up again. So... Hopefully um, there's some clues there. Fill out those pages. Have a great weekend. Don't smoke. Encourage other people not to smoke. And I'll see you next week.
Hello Year 11 and 12s, welcome back for another afternoon of Urara to You. We're doing some maths and this is the last lesson of the week. So we're all very excited um, to be teaching you right now. We're very excited for that. First up, I've done a little bit of a word jumble here about what we've been learning about before and what we're learning about today in our maths and I have a special guest coming up. Come on down. Woohoo! All right. Now you don't have to greet them. That's fine. You just go for it. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So this is what we'll be learning about data. Today we're learning about graphs. Just needs an oh, S there. That's yes. right. Hey, hey, hey. I and then this is another thing we've been learning about, but obviously Tyson hasn't been listening. <laughs> this Do you want to? He said seatbelt before, oh. but it's not seatbelt. Right, I got it. Yeah. Tyson, you are fantastic! Yeah. Woohoo! He said he was I did graduate. <laughs> so this is what we have been learning. Everyone's very rowdy behind the camera, but I'm composed, so thank goodness. This is what we've been learning about, data and tables. Today we're going to have a look at graphs. And I'm actually going to uh, show you how we can put a graph onto my laptop, so how you can do it online. Before we do that, though, I'm going to just show you which part of the workbook we're up to, so you know what I'm talking about. Now, am I right to just put this straight on top? You can still see that? Yep. All right, this is where we're at with our workbook. We're looking at graphs. Data can be organised in graphs to make it easier to read and analyse or to understand. Different graphs are used to display different types of information. For example, we have a pie graph. It's used to show something that is easy to divide, a bit like a pizza there. A line graph will show how something can rise or fall. All right, and we have a line graph here and you can follow it along. Like rainfall. And a bar graph or a column graph is this one here. It can be used to compare data. All right, so we've got a pie graph, like a pie or a pizza. We've got a line graph, rise and fall, and we've got column or bar graphs. We've also got here just a couple of pictures of a dot plot. That's fun to say. There we go. This is people's favourite colour for houses in community. We have a picture graph, and you can see pictures represent the data. And this one's a scatter graph. It actually looks fairly scattery there. This is about the increase in student grades with hours spent at school. All right, so that's what we're up to in our workbook. You're going to have a go at doing this, and all of this information is on this page. Now, I'm going to show you how to put a graph onto a computer or an iPad. So, the data that I'm using, I'm going to bring it back over here. This is what I prepared earlier. We did this the other day. I'd asked Urara staff, how many siblings do you have? So that is brothers and sisters. And I went through, there were 15 different staff members. These are all their different siblings. So I've put them on there and I'm going to put this into a graph so you can see what it looks like because this looks fairly messy. Let's see how we can neaten it up and make it easier to understand. Just going to quickly log into my computer. So watch me go here. Okay, here we are. Can we see that all right on the cameras? Beautiful. So this is called a graph maker. You can choose line graph, bar graph, pie chart, scatter plot, table chart. I'm choosing a bar graph. Okay. Now, I put some of this information in earlier so that it'll be quicker. So I've put the title, How Many Siblings? And that's it right there. Yes. Oh, good reminder. Paul actually showed me how to make this bigger. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah. Cool. All right. There we are. So on the horizontal axis, that's the part that goes across. I'm going to put people's names, and I've already put that in there. That's it there. The vertical axis, which is the bit that goes up and down, I'm going to put the number of siblings. And I want it to go from 0 to 10. So I've popped that in there, 0 to 10. I want 
Across, I want data labels, so I want people's names across. So if I scroll down, I've already put all the names in. And I hope that I've spelt them right. There should be 15 names that I put in there. All there. Okay, oh, I got, a, got an email. <laughs> Good. Okay, I've asked for it to be a bar graph, so I've chucked that in there, but I could choose how many bars. You could have two, three, four. I just want one. I just want it to be clear. I've chosen the colour green because it's my favourite colour. And in here, I'm going to quickly put the data values. So I'm going to get Tyson to call them out to me. Tyson wasn't ready for this, but it's really easy. I just want you to call out to me two, two, one. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? So what's the first one? Two. Yep, next one? Two. Next one? One. Good. Three. Yes. One. Yes. Two. Yep. Eight. Eight. Yep, that was Lee. <laughs> Six. Three. <laughs> three. Three. Was that another three? Yeah. Okay. Three. The 15 staff, and you can see easier now who had the most siblings. So if I see here, this one here, Lee, he has eight. Tiff had eight, they had the most siblings. The person with the least amount was Max. He had zero. And then you can see that there was one, two, three, four people with three siblings. And when we did this the other day, that was our average number of siblings that people had. So that's just a little fun activity for you. It makes it a bit quicker than me putting it up on the board. All right. So I'm going to close this now, I'm just going to close it up, but I'm going to show you one more thing in front of the camera just to remind you what we've learnt about graphs because we're going to be doing so many more graphs next week. Are we ready? <laughs> just then I did a bar or a column graph, okay? I did my own little picture here. It, someone has just said it's not very good, but the best I could do. All right, bar column graph. To remind you, graphs are a way to organise data. All right, just a nice easy way. Next bit. They can make it easier to read and understand the data. And the last thing, and we'll be learning about some of these, different graphs are used for different information. Today we did bar and column graphs. We'll do different ones next week. All right, I think we are sorted. We are finished. I just want to say a big thank you to all the people that are behind these cameras. I called them up at the last minute to help me out with little activities and they're always up for it and they're always helping out. So thanks to everyone behind the cameras. Oh yeah, everyone's getting a bit emotional now. <laughs> Thanks for listening and um, hopefully see you back at school soon um, and see you next week for more learning. Bye. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are, all over the NT or APY or Dumachi, Gulf Country, Catherine side, East Creole, West Creole, Western Desert. It's good to see you now. So, the story today, it's another story about the big land where Jesus was living. And in the middle of his land where he lives, there's another land called Samaria. And maybe they used to say something like um, Samaria, 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 we say Samaria. They probably said Samaria, and the people who lived there, well, they were called Samaritans. So you know the story of the Good Samaritan, and there's other stories about the Samaritans who all live in there, in that land, Samaria, right in the middle of Jesus' land. Now, the big city, Jerusalem, down south, Jesus' home community up in the north. Every time he goes walking from his community down to the big city, he's got to cut through Samaria, Samaria, where 
the Samaritans all living there. Now, a long time ago, his people, Jesus, and Samaritan people, there was like one tribe. But now, it's no good. His people and Samaritan people they don't get on anymore. They don't like to talk to each other. They don't want to marry each other. They don't want to eat from the same plate or drink from the same cup or get water from the same place. No. They want to stay. You mob that side, us mob that side. Trouble is, each time Jesus is taking a shortcut, from his community down to the city Jerusalem or coming back home taking a shortcut he's always cutting through that Samaria land that's the story now Jesus is cutting through back home taking the shortcut but he's got to go through Samaritan land it's really hot really hot day about lunchtime, he sees a well. He thinks, I'll go and sit by the well. Maybe somebody will come with a bucket and they can get me a drink. So he's sitting there by this well. He's got no bucket. He's hoping somebody will come. Sure enough, middle of the day, a lady is coming. Now this lady is not from his people. Samaritan lady, because he's in Samaritan land. That's where the well is. It's a Samaritan well in Samaritan land. And he's sitting there. And this woman lady comes and he says to her, I'm really thirsty. Can you get me a drink, please? She says, hey, what are you doing? You can't ask me for a drink. I'm a Samaritan, and you're not a Samaritan. What are you doing? We can't talk to each other. And Jesus says something very mysterious. He says, if you knew the full story, you'd be asking me for a drink. And she says to him, what are you talking about? Me ask you for a drink, you even got no bucket. How are you going to get me a drink with no bucket? And then she says, your people and my people, we worship God in two different ways. You worship on the mountain in Jerusalem and my people Samaritan. We're going to worship on this mountain in Samaritan country. See? Two different ways. Jesus says to her, you know what, time is going to come soon when no one's going to do worshipping on any mountain at all. You're going to worship with your spirit and your heart and by being true. This Samaritan woman lady, she's very interested in this. She's had a lot of trouble in her life. She's had five husbands. But she can see that Jesus is very kind. And she thinks, maybe he's the one we've been waiting for. So she runs back into her village, her Samaritan village. And she says, everybody, guess what? What? I think I've met the one we've been waiting for. And they believe her. And in the story it says that because of what she says, all of them come running out to see Jesus and they love him and he loves them. And they say, hey, you should come back to our Samaritan village and stay with us. What are they doing? He's not from their people, but they don't care. They say, you should come our village, stay with us, our place. 
and he goes to their Samaritan land, their Samaritan community. He stays with them, the story says, for two days, two days, eating and drinking and sharing plates and sharing cups and all the things he wasn't supposed to do. The Bible story says that because of that woman, her community came to love him. And later on, later on, she became a saint in the old, old church a long time ago. They said that Samaritan lady, she was a saint. And they called her Saint Fatina. And Fatina means light in the old Greek language. They said, you see, she brought the light to her community and she shared it with them. So they said, she is a saint. She brought the light. Saint Fatina, that's her name now. <laughs> so all of you, wherever you are, is it morning or is it the afternoon or is it nighttime? doesn't matter. I hope you take care of your family, take care of yourself. Look forward to seeing you back at Urara whenever you can get back here. Amen, amen.